Today we're looking at the Triceratops, the thing that most T-Rexes would fear. And by the end of this video, I would have shown you how to draw this amazing creature. Here I am in Texas, Sugarland, at the museum, and I'm sketching a Triceratops. And man, it's a massive beast. It's got one of the biggest skulls of any land-dwelling animal. So I'm using a 3B pencil. If you don't have a 3B pencil, you know, use whatever you've got. It can be a HB. But always try, if you go, the next time you go to a shop, try and look for a 2B or a 4B or something like that. Much more fun to draw with. But if you don't have them, just use whatever pencil you've got. And look how I'm holding the pencil. The same way you'd hold a butter knife. I am doing this because you have a little bit less control and kind of gets a bit more wild and free. Plus you get more tone up. So I'm just sort of rubbing in some light areas there as you can see on the top left there is a picture of the finished one so you can kind of know what i'm doing here and as you follow you can see this way of holding the pencil may not have as much control but it does give a lot of freedom so you can see how I'm slowly working up bits and pieces of the actual animal skull I'm basing this on the sketch that I took of the one in Sugarland in Texas. Now I am refining some of the actual bits and pieces. Now if I go too fast you can pause the video, catch up, even rewind, go over bits again. You can see I'm just sort of yeah, just letting the pencil do its own thing in a, some ways. When I hold it like you would sign your name, you, you haven't got as, you've got a lot more control. This way you don't have as much control. And so sort of fun things can happen. Makes the drawing a lot looser, a lot freer. And sometimes you just gotta allow the drawing to do its own thing. It's a case of letting go. Sometimes you just gotta let it go. You gotta be willing to let go of the control that you normally have and just say this is going to be a quick sketch a rough sketch so you're just putting rough lines here and there it's not one of those things where you want to really control and you can see when you put your hand to the side you can get this a much flatter but wider line it's a quicker way of sketching started off pressing very lightly now i'm pressing harder and a lot of this is about working out where you're putting the light and the shade. Doing a little bit about the frill of the, what I call the shield. Because this big frill around here works like a big shield. It's kind of having confidence too. So here's the shading. Shading definitely pencil on the side like you hold your butter knife. It's a bit like spreading a slice of toast with Vegemite. So, just pressing a bit harder, and we're getting it darker. See, it really go crazy with it there. Outside the portrait of the uh, Triceratops, doesn't really matter. This is just sort of bush or darkness. So you go pretty quick here. And a bit of darkness in there too. Colouring in all the space around the head, it makes him show up. So one of the tricks I'm going to show today is how the white highlights work. Because we're covering most of the thing. Now I'm going into flipping it around and holding the pencil the same way you would if you was going to write your name. So it's the writing grip. So I'm getting some really smaller and much more refined lines here when I do the eye. some wrinkles around the eye so sort of like an elephant's eye we're going to just shade in a bit here best we do we're going to leave a few little light bits just like that and a few little scaly bits there wiggly bits here and there these wiggly bits are sort of like 
You know how dragons, as in like, you know, frilled neck lizards and things like that, they have sort of rough, bumpy skin. Scales are so small and close together, it just kind of looks like elephant skin. Work a bit on the horns there. Just putting in the occasional line here and there. It's a lot of fun putting in all this detail. And some detail there too. Let's swish those lines around. A swishy motion. Of course, this is a fun drawing. You've got to have fun when you draw. Can't be too serious. Because if it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. So, have that attitude of don't care if it works or not. We're just going to have some fun. And often you'll find your drawings work out much better. Right, let's go put a bit of a teardrop here. That's going to be his nose hole. A bit of stuff around the nose there. You can work pretty fast. I'm not speeding this up. This is just how fast I'm working. Some craggly, gnarly bits there. So when I'm holding the pencil like this, I'm getting a thinner line. So this is putting thin lines around different places. So I can darken in some of the light ones. Here we go. Those sort of fun bits of the mouth here. It's a heavily armoured dinosaur. When you think of armour, think of a knight with a shield and a sword. So the knight's got armour, but he's got a shield out there and a sword. Whereas the Triceratops has an extra big shield, two swords and a dagger. So this would be an absolute menace. It'd be the nightmare of a T-Rex. The only way T-Rexes would get these guys is if the T-Rexes would hunt in a pack and somehow distract it while they bite it from behind. There's no way they'd take it on at the front. The other interesting thing about the Triceratops is that its neck is really unique in that it's almost like a ball socket uh, join in the neck there so it can spin its head around really fast. Again, imagine knights with shields spinning around, moving the shield fast, moving the sword fast at the same time. But like I said, this is like having a big shield with two swords and a dagger. So fully armed. But a T-Rex would have to be awfully hungry to try and take this guy on. Almost got like a beak, but then there's teeth inside. So sort of flat teeth for crushing up plants. Because this guy's a plant eater. He's a cool dinosaur. One of my favourites. So shade in here. Pressing nice and hard to get it nice and dark in here. Even going over it a bit. If you want it really, really dark. Some craggy old lines up here. Make him look all gnarly. That's the way. I'm putting my hand back to the other way. I'm now holding again like a butter knife. And we're going to spread some more shade around here. So I want his head to stand out. Really shade it. Really press hard. So okay so far. Put a few more little details here and there. Yeah, let's shade the back here. So this is going pretty fast and it's a lot of it's because of the way I'm holding the pencil. Holding the pencil to the side like that. 
The interesting thing is it actually sharpens the pencil as you draw. Bit more shade around the neck here. I'm giving the sort of the impression of a neck. Darker. Probably under the chin here a bit. Make him a bit darker. Right. Standing out quite well. It's looking a bit pale. I think we might have to put some more shade here and there. We'll start in here. Now I'm doing it very, very gently because I want a little slight grey tone over quite a lot of him. But I'm going to leave some bits white. So a bit of grey around his eye here. Especially the underside of the eye. Around his jaw here. Again, okay, sort of shading but using those sort of craggy old gnarly lines as well. Because we want to make him look like a gnarly old creature. There we go. Gentle shading. Thing is, when you're doing the gentle shading, you can always go back and make it darker. So start off gentle, and then just get darker and darker. You get dark under that horn there, so that horn stands out. And make this one go too, also stand out. Go shade back here. So I shade this, but I don't shade the light side of the horn. It makes the horn stand out a bit more. And now he's getting some nice shading tones all over him. At the top parts, I'm going to leave sort of white to his bottom jaw a bit here, it looks a bit white, it'd be under shadow a bit, a bit more shadow there, I'm going to try and darken just under the top beak, it's going to working well so far, here I'm just going to put sort of bits of shade here and there all over the place, like in blotches, a little bit here, a little bit there, to try and look a bit like a forest in the background. So it's a bit uneven. In the same way that trees are sort of blurry in the background. Some squiggly bits here and there. Dark and under here a bit more. So we're just playing with tones. Most of this drawing is being playing with tones. And what I might do is get the eraser in a minute. I'll just darken this bit up here first. And hopefully you have an eraser on hand because we're going to use that very shortly. First I want to make sure I get all the darks. The eraser is going to be the last thing I use. I'm getting all the darks here. A little bit more detail here. A few more gnarly lines here. Okay, now get the eraser and make sure that horn is nice and light. Maybe just this top bit up here. And I think that's just about done it. Maybe a little tiny bit here. So I'm using the eraser like I would if I was using white chalk or something like that to put in the highlights. There is our Triceratops. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments section below. If you found it not very helpful, let me know in the comments section below. The only way I'm going to learn is if you guys tell me what's working and what's not. Catch you in the next video.